You are now tuned in to the network. The YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simpler language. And today's topic is layer two and layer three switches. This is a continuation of the last video. However, this is going to be the hands-on or lading section of the topic layer two and layer three switches. Y'all know what it is when y'all see this little girl. So we're going to jump right into it. But before we do that, Please hit me with that like button, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see some more content like this, and also leave a comment below for any kind of constructive criticism you may have or any kind of suggestions you may have or anything like that. Again, you can download Packet Tracer from the Cisco's Netacad website. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below if you want to get your hands dirty with this lab. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so this is the lab Packet Tracer. Configure layer three switches. Remember what we said about layer three switches. I'm not gonna go too deep into the theory It's basically the same thing as layer two except it does layer three functions, which is what IP routing If You want to know more about the theory watch the last video I got a whole playlist and we're gonna continue doing this stuff If I you know if I if I see more subscribers and I see some more people watching then they really are asking for this content but anyways says here part one we want to document the current network configurations basically we're gonna fill out this chart right here but I got an Excel spreadsheet because this is not fillable right here in Packet Tracer. And we're going to configure, deploy, and test the new multi layer switch. Let's examine this topology real quick. We got the Edge router right here. So let's say we got the member, the, the Edge is like the hockey puck, right? The router. So we got the internet that's going to be on this side right here. Now we take it to the local area network. We got a local area network switch right here, the layer two switch. We got a router right here. And then we got another layer two switch right here. Basically, we're going to take all of these devices right here in the local area network and do and replace it with this multi layer switch right here or layer three switch right here. How can it do that, right? Layer three switches can handle layer two and layer three functions. That's how come we're going to take all of that, uh, take all these devices and basically replace it with a multi layer switch. Now, just watch the last video if you want more theory on, you know, the pros and cons of using layer two switches versus layer three switches or comparing them with a router and things like that. So it says here, the network administrator is replacing the current router and a switch with a new layer three switch. Like we mentioned, it is your job to configure and place it in the service. You'll be working after hours to minimize disruption to the business. Uh, my change has been during the day. We recently, I guess we just been, uh, we just got tired of wake, waking up early in the morning to do these changes. Document current network configurations. Normally a production router will have many more configurations than just one IP addressing, uh, just I interface IP addressing. However, to expedite this activity, only interface IP addressing is configured on router one. Where's router one? That's this guy right here. We're gonna click on router one, then the CLI tab. Click on router one. We're gonna go to the CLI tab. And he says here, use the available commands to gather interface addressing information. Then document the information in the addressing table. Well. Remember I said this is not fillable, so I just went ahead and opened up this Excel spreadsheet that we're going to fill out right here. So they want to know the interfaces on router one, the IP addressing, and the subnet mask. How do we do that? This is one feature, one command you will really want to ingrain in your mind. Show IP interface brief. Shout out to my man Tony E. That's his uh, tag name. But anyway, we got to go to, and then before the, we can't do that in privilege or user exec mode. So if we do show IP interface brief, you're good at, oh, I guess you can do that. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Let's see, we got gigabit zero zero and gigabit zero one that are configured. The rest of these have not been configured, right? Basically, we need to document these guys right here. We're gonna copy that, place that right in here. Boom. We also got a gigabit zero one right here. Copy. Notice we don't see the subnet mask here, right? Another command you want to know, show interface and then just the interface name. So in this case, GI zero slash zero. Remember, you could just tab. You ain't got to type the whole thing. Hit enter. And that's how we can get our subnet mask. It's slash 24. When well, we're not going to write it in a cider notation, we're just going to do 255.255.255.0. We will do a video on subnetting soon enough. That way y'all know how to convert CIDR to subnet mask and stuff like that. The next guy is GI01, which I believe we could do 01 and then switch port, and that'll give us the subnet mask as well. No, it's not a switch port. So show interface GI0 slash one. And we see that's also a slash 24. 
and the IP address is 192.168.0.2 so 192.168.0.2 and then on the multi-layer switch we are going to take all of that and put it down there but don't worry about that for now we worked with router one and we got the information that we needed now we are going to configure and deploy and test the new multi-layer switch we're going to configure multi-layer switch to use the address of the scheme from router one so all this information that we copy from this spreadsheet right here we're going to place that we're going to place all, all those configurations from this guy and put it on the multi-layer switch or the layer three switch click multi-layer switch one and then the cli tab that's this guy right here you can see this is i believe a 3560 switch these are these are eol on our network in my job uh, i'm gonna go to cli tab right here and then we're gonna interface configuration enter configure interface configuration mode for gigabit zero one so we're gonna go to enter we're gonna go to enable we're gonna go to global config mode how do we do that with configure terminal enter and then we're in global config mode now we need to go to interface gigabit zero one we're typing interface tab gigabit tab zero slash one now y'all see how i did that real quick right we just tab over right now we're in interface config mode how do we know that because it says config if you would think it would say if config right configure the ip address to be the same as the address for router one on gigabit zero one and activate the port so that's two steps we got to do here notice we've got zero out of 100 complete so what was the address on that guy it was 192.168.0.2 that's zero one right so we'll do ip address tab over and then it said the address was 192.168.0.2 so 192.168.0.2 and then the sudden mask we got to do 255.255.255.0 press enter for some reason can't do that uh and i believe we got to go to switch mode switch port mode Oh, that's why. Change the port, change the port to routing mode by entering the no switch port command. So that's what it was. Yeah. So we got to do no switch port. I see. I skipped that step. That's what happened there. No switch port. Now we put in the IP address, and notice we've got ten out of a hundred. So that's the difference between a routed port and a switched port. That's why I didn't take that IP address. A uh, switch port is basically layer two. So you're not gonna put. You can't put an IP address in. IP address is what layer three. We discussed that in the last video. If you don't understand that, go to that last video to understand the theory behind it. Now we can put the IP address, hopefully, 192.168.0.2.255.255.0.255.0. And now notice we've got 40 out of 100. Now it took the IP address, right? Then he also said to activate the port. How do we do that? No shutdown. That turns on the port, basically. Enter interface configuration mode for interface VLAN 1. So now we gotta get out of this. We don't have to do it this way, but I like to do that just for the simple show y'all. We go to interface VLAN one. Now this is gonna be the management IP address. This is not the same thing as like an actual port. Remember, this is a virtual port. So he wants us to configure the IP address to be the same for router as the address on router one's GI00 and activate that port. So interface VLAN one is gonna be the same thing as router one's GI00 port what was that we documented it here right the gi00 port was 172.16.31.1 so now we do ip address 172.16.31.1.255.255.255.0 now if you're probably asking how come we ain't had to do no switch port there well that's because this is a virtual port it's not layer two it's virtual so we just we can just make it layer three automatically i don't even believe you can do uh yeah, I don't think you can do switch port command on a on a on a virtual interface anyway. So like let's say switch, yeah, you can't even do that. See, so now we are at eighty percent complete. We're almost done here. This is a quick lab, so save the configuration they want us to do. So we just get out of this. Remember what I said? How to save the configs? Right? It's copy running configuration to the starter configuration. So basically, we're copying what we've got here, the running configuration. This is what currently running. And we want to put it to the startup configuration so that's why we say copy run start for short so copy right now type it all out though running united we need to get out of global config mode copy running 
config, startup config. We press enter, it's gonna ask us, do you wanna change, save it as startup config? We press enter. Building config, okay, so basically we saved everything right now. Um, we're still at 80%, why? Because we need to deploy the multi-layer switch and verify that the connectivity is restored. Following steps will be normally done after hours or when traffic on the production network is at its lowest volume, which is typically at night, to minimize downtime. The new equipment should be fully configured and ready to, ready to deploy. Click an empty area of the screen to unselect all devices. So we're gonna click an empty area right in here. And then we're gonna use the delete tool. We'll delete tool, that's this guy right here. And we're gonna delete all these guys that we don't need, right? So we're gonna delete the switch. We don't need the router anymore. We don't need layer two switch. We're gonna replace it with this multi-layer switch right here. So now we're not gonna push, we're not gonna click that because it's gonna delete it. We need to click the select button right here. We're gonna move him right here. And notice this guy, and remember what I said about scalability, right? We took this multi-layer switch to replace uh, two switches and a router. So now that we've deleted all those events, the devices, we simply deleted router one, simply router, uh, router two and switch one. We're gonna select the appropriate cables to complete the following. We're going to connect multi-layer switch gig one to the edge GI00 port. So we're gonna take a cable. This is the lightning bolt that gives you all the cables. What, which one do we need? Do we need a console cable? No. Do we need a straight through cable? Sounds about right. Do we need a, what kind of cable is this? I believe this is a crossover cable. The answer is, pause it and think about it. It's a straight through cable because we're going from a switch to a router and then we're gonna be going switch to PC. So y'all know the difference between switch, crossover, and co console and rollover cables. We'll do a video on that soon too. So we take this, the uh, straight through. We're gonna go, he said from multi-layer switch gig zero one, right? Gig zero one is right here, to the edge routers gig zero zero. So we're gonna click the edge router, go to gig zero zero, click now we got 82 percent complete we're going to do the same thing and basically connect the rest of the pc so we're going to use straight through cables for these guys as well we're going to go to f801 to pc1 and then fast ethernet zero port we're not going to go to usb ports we're not going to go to the serial port or the computer we're going to go to the nick card that's this guy now we're at 84 percent complete do the same thing over and over and over until you get to until you get done FA03, PC3, last one, notice we're at 88% complete. We go to FA04, PC4, now we're at 90% complete. We are going to verify all the PCs campaign. Uh, first he says connect all the PCs to the FA0, uh, FAST Ethernet ports on multi-layer switch one, which we did. Verify they can uh, ping the edge and then wait until the orange uh, light link lights turn green. Notice we're at 90%, I think it's because we didn't turn on our virtual uh, interface VLAN. Let's see. Now, we did not. So let's do this, watch this, I'll show y'all. We do show IP interface brief. I can't do any exclude, so we got to look at the whole thing. And notice VLAN one is, administ is admin down. It basically it's turned off, so we need to turn it on. That's why we got 90% there. So we're gonna go to interface config mode, global config, configure terminal interface VLAN one, right? And we're gonna do a no shut. That basically turns on that interface. So no shutdown, right? Enter, and now we're at 100%. And notice it says here, interface VLAN one, change state to up. Line protocol, change state to up. So now it's up. And we're at 100% now. Wait till the orange light turn, turns green. We're gonna now see if PC4 can ping the edge router, which we should. And the edge router is, what's his IP address? 192.168.0.1. So let's just, we're gonna pick one PC. I'm not gonna do all PCs. Ping 192.168.0.1. Probably gonna ARP for the gateway and get a drop ping packet. Request timed out. Come on, buddy. There we go, and there it goes. Now we got 50% reply. Let's go ahead and do it again, see if we can get a over 100% reply, and there it goes. That is all I got for y'all today. That is my YouTube page, that is my Twitter handle. Uh, you can go ahead and add me on Twitter if you wanna connect with me on a more personal level. Please hit me with that like button if you wanna see more content like this. This will help my channel if you hit the like button. It, you know, it helps with YouTube algorithm and puts this video on people's feeds. 
uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content. Hit that notification bell that is right next to the subscribe button. That'll let you know when I upload these new videos. For now, please comment, like, subscribe to the network. Bruh.